Um, thank you all so much for coming. I know this has been a real treat for a lot of the artists that are in this show. And Paul did just a wonderful job during it for us. So we're excited to talk about the award winners today. And then anyone else that's here that might want to get some feedback on their work as well. Thank you. All right, take, take it away, Paul. I want to thank Christina and Kinsey. And then who are Cassie and Linda up front just for letting me and uh, have the privilege of being a judge and uh, pleasure of being a judge as well. So today it's just going to be a conversation. And a major task it was too. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a conversation. Could uh, you tell us your name? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Paul Tolliver. 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 T O L I D E R. Okay. Yeah. I was asked to uh, be a judge this year. I've been a volunteer here uh, for a number of years. I've judged other shows here, other specific shows, not the member show. Uh, last year I did uh, one of the judges of Embracing Our Differences downtown. Uh, and uh, we had a major three last February, uh, the Sun Coast Black Arts Collaborative Group did a three venue show with over uh, 50 different artists and three different venues. Uh, one or two judges for that one as well. So, uh, judging a lot of stuff here. Before that, I moved from Seattle, where I was active in the arts world. I was on the board of Seattle Art Museum, on the Committee for Collections. Uh, up there with a lot of the um, Seattle billionaires. And the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were a few. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're just quiet. Being next to them, uh -huh. <laughs> watching them select what they're going to put in the Seattle Art Museum, uh, as well as other. I chaired a committee that actually funded the grants to artists in Seattle. So, unfortunately, I can't help you here. <laughs> that committee. So, yeah, I've been mean, a lot of years. I've been out as a consumer, as a collector, and not necessarily as an artist, you know. Purchase art, and I have worked with artists and helped them market their work as well by helping them figure out what they need to do to help sell their work to different consumers. So, uh, my approach is coming from that this time, my perspective when we talk about the different pieces that were involved in, in the show. So, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, we had 400, more than 410 pieces, 411 pieces submitted along great artists who are members here. We ended up uh, having to reduce that to like one per person, which was like 221. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, 221 pieces that we started with. So we went through all of that. And we, uh, at that point, we took it and just spent some time going through each and every one of them and say, which one of these moved us as we walked past, past them, which one spoke to us and said, hey, stop, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'll do is just start with uh, some of the honorable mentions. And the first is called Spilt Coffee by a great artist called Ann Wilkinson. <laughs> and we came to this one. I looked at that and I said, Spilt Coffee. And it just made me think of a a blues song from a great blues artist uh, named, uh, who was my blues artist? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, who knows that song? It's Ella M. James, it's called Sugar on the Floor. Oh, yes. Uh, and she said, I just feel wasted. You know, I said, oh, that's it right there. It's, it's a waste. You know, like a bad relationship. It's just bad, you know. And I said, is that wonder what was going on in this artist's head? You know, could be just he spoke a latte, <laughs> and that's what that was about. But <laughs> I thought it was about more. You know? And I think I'm going to adopt that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to uh, steal from you and that wonderful explanation. Yeah, you know, you, you see, you know when she sings it, it's just you know whatever this person who left her, you know, she just feels wasted. I said that it looks like that's it. You know, so. Uh -huh. That moved me. So that was a great uh, honorable mention, Dan. Thank, Thank you very you. much for that. So, and I happen to have in the honors of all, most, most of the ones I selected over here, which is kind of interesting. The uh, uh, next one, if you got a question, just go ahead and uh, interrupt me because this is a conversation. Yeah, uh, does anyone have any thoughts for Anne? Yes. Any feedback? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I'm not sure what kind of coffee it was. Man. <laughs> it was very black. <laughs> it must have been really hot. Yes, must have been. Um, it just came to be fully formed. And, fully formed. Yeah, I, and I wish it would come many times more. But yes, it, um, uh, and I wasn't so much in that kind of despair, but but it was this idea of somebody sw being swallowed by something. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, so I have a general question about your judging. Yes. So I know from Anne that this is watercolor pencil and um, and colored pencil, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, so did the medium make a difference in what attracted you to a piece? Uh, it, the answer is yes and no. You'll see the of the nine, we have about four different mediums uh -huh. that were involved. So. I just thought, uh, especially uh, when we get to this, it's a different medium all together. Mm -hmm. the next one I'm going to talk about uh, is different medium. So yet, uh, the answer is no. But, I mean, if it, if it was a great piece of art and the medium didn't matter, but I ended up, you know, of the 400 down to 200 that we used, there were, um, you know, difficult choices. So, mm -hmm. Almost could reach in sometimes and grab something or you you you, you are it's of merit. So mm -hmm. we district. It is a distribution here of different ones. We have oil, watercolors, and that sculptures, acrylic, photography. All those were have a ribbon on them. So the the medium that was appropriate with uh, with the um, for, for the show. So it wasn't. Uh, I wasn't just going for the oil or anything like that. Okay. Just whatever worked, it helped. Like the next one is going to be a little blue sculpture right behind you. Is um, body language and photo by uh, Ravi. I think Ravi's last name. Uh, Christine will be here. You help me with this, but Venka Taraman. Yes. Is that how you just pronounce his last name? <laughs> but I just thought that was a beautiful little piece. Uh, I see that it is sold. It's the acrylic sculpture. Again, we're talking about the medium acrylic in this case sculpture. And here we started to weave, weave in some new technology that's being used in the art world today. This was designed beautifully by Robbie and then 3D printed. 3D printed. Mm -hmm. the new Technology that uh, kicks out, but you have to be artistic to tell the computer what it is you're looking for, and it'll do exactly what you do. input jump. You're going to get jump input a beautiful design. You'll get pretty much uh, that piece. So that got an honorable mention, and it got sold. <laughs> so that was that was a pretty piece for me. This one, this was a um, kind of wonder what who they're talking to. What they're saying, kind of a hint of sadness, and then with the, the head down and wondering what that conversation is about. So all of that, you know, that's the story that you kind of ask, if you know, what, what's happening there. So that would just stop. that would work well, uh, definitely in a contemporary home. No question about that. Maybe in a kind of a modern office setting as well. But, uh, it would, uh, you know, if I were. Purchasing definitely look for those two locations to ultimately end up with that. So yeah, I'll look at my notes every now and then make sure I don't get too much. Yeah, I mean, so this is Riley's thesis, was up to an honorable mention. And um, I, I probably would have tried to buy it, but I waited too late. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that was the second one. The next thing over here somewhere is the photography. We just talked about that. Moving back over to the other wall, it's called um, When You Awake Inside by Federico Torres. This one uh, here. This way, I'll leave the folks listening from home, but I just thought that was an interesting shot. Uh, definitely the feeling of isolation, desolation, quiet, loneliness, all those good words, peace, etc. cetera. Uh, but then again, you see the is instead of a shot, usually you see photography shooting up at the sky and the stars and 
This is from down, shooting down. Mm -hmm. So I take it now we're now using drones and new technology mm -hmm. to shoot photography down at us. So the artist, photographer, I've seen some other folks you know, doing that as well. I saw a guy that was at the St. Armour's uh, this weekend, so you were there for the art show. The guy there who uses kites to shoot photography. And yeah, I said, wow. So I mean, that's where your artists are going with all the new technology, just doing new things with the pretty, pretty drones from the sky. But that was a beautiful shot, you know, it just shows the earth at peace. And but all of a sudden, kind of disrupt, disrupted, interrupted by human, the humans leaving their footprints in the sand now all of a sudden. So where once we were at peace millions of years ago, with this introduction of this human now, we know where that takes us, <laughs> it brings us to where we are today. So still want to know the story of, of it. So all of that to just kind of get it. It's a beautiful shot. What's yeah. also interesting to me is this looks like a, um, what is it, a regular shot of the ocean, but the figure is reduced. Mm. So the, the effect is even larger by um, making the figure smaller. Uh, because the waves don't seem mm -hmm. like ocean waves if you're that far away. It is interesting. It, it, uh, you know, it's a, as a, I can see it if it were oil, you could do all of that, or you a painting mm -hmm. as a, a, a photo. It's interesting. I it, like the, the enormous contrast. He, he cut the paper via a diagonal in half mm -hmm. and left his turmoil and wild, and the other side totally the opposite. It's calm, desolate, peace, and quiet. Yes. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And you can, uh, you know, it would work. I could see a residential area, kind of a casual setting. Uh, peaceful when you need to look at something. Peace and quiet, calm. And quiet. So that was number three. Well, unfortunately, um, Freddie couldn't be here with us today. Mm -hmm. He's working. Um, but I thought I should mention he's actually part of our installation crew as well. So oh. <laughs> that is great. I did not try to do a beautiful job. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, there was a current movie out playing right now. This is, I was going back to the, I said the beginning before humans you know, disrupted our society, you know, the whole disruptive technology thing. Kind of like the term is now for this one movie called Origins. It's now called the origins of our discontent. Mm -hmm. the history of our discontent humans. That's uh, so true. That's the Ava DuVernay. Yes. Ava uh, DuVernay. Oh. I had the pleasure working with her mm -hmm. when she was uh, beginning. The, uh, so that's it right there. This is called and the, the drone thing. I'm thinking of drone. I have to talk to Freddie how he got this picture, whether it was a drone. I was thinking oh, it, was could he up there hmm? it could be a lighthouse. He could be at the top of a he lighthouse. Be, yeah, right yeah. Yeah. But if, yeah. but if, or it's small in the issue of proportionality, uh -huh. because that, uh -huh. you know, it seems like you would have to be kind of far if the human is that small. Right. Yeah. We don't know where that is. I, no, I no he know. told me, I think it's in the Caribbean, but I'm not sure. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that, he does travel a lot. Yeah. yeah. Before we move away, let me ask you a question yeah. based on the three that you've talked about so far. For you as a critic, what jumps out at you first? Is it color? Is it uh, topic? Is it size? Is it? Yeah, okay. The, this was the topic, the visual topic it was kind of the, this the, the isolation. Uh -huh. That just caught me. Without the human, just a lot. And then, uh, then I like, I, Actually, I took a photography once and it was just, I call it layers, the, the different layers because of the beach, the blue water, the sand, and then the sky. You can just see different layers of that from an abstract, uh, it's kind of an abstract photo, but it's all about the, a layered approach where you can just, just see the different colors as they move into each other. So that caught me as kind of the visual topic, the visual conversation. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean specifically that yeah, one. Okay. I was looking at all three of them, which are completely different oh. pieces. There, um, so my question is, what in general? Oh, but you know, it, 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 it has to move you emotionally. Mm -hmm. So it's that that does it. Whatever it is, sometimes it's colors, the use of colors. Sometimes it's just the topic. You'll see 
Some of them, it'll just be the top of the blue piece. Uh, sculpture will hang as a topic. You kind of wonder what, what was this person thinking about? But, you know, it's kind of what touches you, the feeling, the emotion that you feel like you want to live with if you purchase this piece. When you look at it every day, are you going to be able to live, you know? It's a good question to ask oneself every time one yeah. looks at a uh, um, piece of work. The ones you want to buy, it, right? Can I, mm -hmm. can I live with this thing? Every day? I might not want to buy this. <laughs> <laughs> um, this thing, yeah. So, how can you make an adjustment against a, an oil painting, let's say, or an abstract painting, and a photograph? Yeah. Okay, three different, totally different yeah, uh, totally styles, uh, medium, right. You, you can just, all of them do speak to you. That artist has something to say. And does, is that artist, whether it's a photographer, whether it's a sculptor, whether it's an oil, did they speak to me? Did that work of art speak to me? No matter what it was, whether it was a photographer, whether it was an oil painting. Did and so, so and how did it make you feel? So that means that, Every juror is going to jury so differently. Yes. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's Unless it's all one thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. And then, you know, the, this, the ultimate juror, though, is the, the person, did they buy it? You know, yeah. I, you, know you, you understand that. Yes. Belaboring that point, uh, in the context of this show, there is a lot of work here. It is. And you do not have the benefit of taking a piece off the wall and singling it out. You have to look at everything That's right. all at once. That requires a lot of focus. It does. Mm -hmm. yeah. I started with 400 pieces. Christina said, here, Paul. <laughs> get, back, get back to me. Uh, okay, I'll cheat. This is mine. It's got nothing to do with the art center, but I narrowed this down to like the top 10% that I think Ultimately, have a lot of potential uh, uh, for potential investment potential. Uh, as a this personalness, I can't blame. I can't put that on art center because they're not allowed to do that. I got members here. <laughs> so, but I said, okay. And then all these forty, then we now take these down to they want nine. Nine. I, was, I asked for more. They would not let me do more. <laughs> uh, so down to nine from there. And then ultimately, who gets the blue ribbon? Which you'll see, which you've seen already. End up at the blue ribbon. Uh, number four. Let's see if I, because that's on the wall over here, the other side. I wonder if I should stay over here for a second. Let's stay over here for a second. We'll move to the one called waiting room right behind you there. I think that's a merit. The two men sitting in the waiting room. And of course, the question that you know it stops you there. You say, well, what are they waiting on? Who are they waiting for? I mean, that's what it just stops you want to know that. And um, they look kind of anxious, uh, like they want to. Uh, Somebody to hurry up, or uh, so I, that's the story. What what are they waiting on? I, I don't know. You want to ask? Them. Can I help you? With, you know, they look kind of not just anxious, like uh, and they look like twins. <laughs> it's another whole story. <laughs> so I just see some degree of anxiety in them, like the uh, like. Um, I don't know if they're waiting on the birth of the kid or waiting to be inter interrogated by the law. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you, would they, they are, just, the colors here are, uh, are not overly bright or anything, but it gives a sense of uh, answer that sense of anxiety in my mind. It's the, like, kind of subdued and mixed dirty colors of the floor. So what you got? I like it. It's a fun. I call it a fun light in terms in terms of the painting. The fun painting. It's not overly serious. Definitely will work in a residence. No question about it. 
in an office setting, I'm not sure, but in a casual setting, there is. It has a fitness feel when you have a hopper turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, and the slacks are quite loud. <laughs> Here's a, a, a comment I made to myself, and I said that this would work extremely well in a personal residence, especially in one with mid city modern decor. Uh, for our New England snowbird friends, it would be the focal point of many discussions. <laughs> So, I mean, I, just, I thought it was fun. You know, these, these two men waiting on each other every day. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> what are you waiting on? So, that was uh, one of the first of the Americans. And then, uh, anything else over here? Yeah, we got, okay. Speaking of medium, oh no, wait a minute. Um, I'm just going to see if I can, my notes from the, this one, we're going to jump ahead to. Foothold to excavate. This particular sculpture right here, the acrylic, so, so ceramic and glaze. Um, foothold to excavate. By, oh, my goodness. Michelle. 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 Oh, Michelle. Put up the S and A. Okay, Quachin Howard. Talk to Christine to make sure I say the name right. Last name. Right. Uh, Michelle, last name, Quachin Power? Um, oh, yes, Knockin Power. Knockin, oh, oh. All right, so this is, I, I looked at that from a distance, I thought, when I saw the photo, it reminded me kind of an abstract porcelain from the 12th century. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Then I got it close. So it was an abstract, but it was the uh, 21st century. Uh, Glaze piece, but uh, I thought it was unique in terms of this uh, use of the medium. Uh, a lot of times it's more defined, figurative piece, but this is an abstract piece, even the abstract designs, the colors, the, the uh, um, landscape, abstract landscape that's in, in the back of it. But I just thought it was unique uh, in terms of um, the use of the, of the medium. Uh, I think this is a contemporary piece, contemporary office piece. Now, and just the opposite, it would also work in a setting, say a residential setting that may have a strong either Asian or African influence in, in a setting, like in a home that has that type of feel, the colors are from Asia because of the potential, you know, the whole Asian Middle Eastern world. Uh, including like Persia, I had a artist I worked with who was from Iraq. He preferred to say he, he was from Persia. He did not want to be known as being from Iraq. Mm -hmm. I didn't think like, there was doing some mm -hmm. t t turbulent times with U.S. and Iraq. So he was a Persian artist. So I just get a feel of some of that Middle Eastern, African, Northern African. Or Asian influence, it would work if you had a lot of other type of decor in your house that uh, was it uh, not uh, Western as well, but contemporary setting, maybe a contemporary office setting, but definitely contemporary residential setting. This was the third place. I jumped ahead, but I thought it was uh, unique and worthy of mentioning, and it was a sculpture. The uh, prize winning sculpture. Uh, uh, and uh, the lobby was you know, award winning, but uh, this was also a top sculpture. And uh, right behind Cassie, we're going to move now. This is questions on this. Uh, we'll move to one behind Cassie, award winning from a young man. He's actually here yeah, with I us know, today. Yeah, I, I saw Steve. Young. <laughs> Steve, um, Steve, your last name is Goodman. Goodman. There we go. Steve Goodman. On the wall. Yeah. Called Jumble. Um, I think I was just talking to Steve about that the other day when he was here. Oh, here we go. Uh, instead of me looking for it. Digital print mounted on wood. 
that was a unique in the first place. I think he also does larger ones. He's here. You need to talk to him. Um, colorful shapes, giving the feeling of being tossed or jumbled. Uh, now, some of you uh, who are abstract artists you know some of the early days of the abstract artists that were very distinct in their shapes and designs and they focused a lot on primary colors, red, blue, yellow. Uh, none of that is here <laughs> in terms of the, just the hardcore red, blue, yellow, but the results of those colors are, going, are these colors right here. So they're very, so, and that's why I said just the opposite, some of the old school abstract artists, the uh, um, definitely a lot of distinct shapes and designs work well as the jumble. It is indeed jumble. You know, you stand back and say, you know, all the abstract, it speaks, it, it, you know, it's about, it's, it's about what the art, artist is feeling, but, you know, to me, it, it feels what it feels to you in this case, you know, you do the uh, interpretation. So, but that's, uh, can't, it stops you, it catches you, it's there's the colors in the first place. It's a, the colors are interesting, it makes you stop and look at it and the shapes, uh, very distinct, as opposed to blended uh, or some other techniques that have been used in, our, in, you know, in post pre abstract days. So this is um, Steve, uh, I, you know, I told him that I look forward to the bigger pieces as well. I think yeah, he's got a, he could, he, he could probably make a bunch of money. Uh, he keeps at it. <laughs> I already sold it, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh -huh. I appreciate the use of earth tones and bright colors because I often see artists that don't introduce the resting space of, with the earth tones, and I think that's appreciated. Like it gives you it mm -hmm. as a place to just go ah, and and the differentiation between the sizes that they're not all the same sizes and they're not some you're curving you're in um, and, and uh, square off edges so. Oh, that is yay. <laughs> Steve, uh, do you think you could explain your process a little bit on how you get those like layers and layers? Sure. So I work digitally and I use uh, Photoshop on the computer and I use a program called Procreate on an iPad. And occasionally I'll sketch something and photograph that and bring it in. Um, and then I go through maybe 50 versions of something and can't decide which one I want to keep, but I, I just keep them all. And if you want, I could just keep it brief, but tell you about that piece. As long as you like. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I do is I borrow from myself a lot. So I, and the computer lets you do that. So you can take a section, you can blow it up, you can change the color, you can reverse it, and you can put it into a different piece. So this part came from a piece that I did around Thanksgiving. It was continued over here. Kind of reminded me of a silhouette of a turkey and kind of celebration. <laughs> this side came from a series I started to do about the Gaza Strip. And I was very, um, I sympathize with Israel, but I'm very upset about the Palestinians who are innocent and dying. So, in my mind, the image is jumbled in terms of color, in terms of elements from different pieces, in terms of celebration and sorrow. And so it worked for me on a, the formal level of jumbled and then on the emotional level. Cool. So that's the thinking behind it. I, I love hearing the actual creator of this. In my comments to myself, uh, I said, um, these shapes and even somewhat jumbled are still very distinct, layered and fashionably contemporary. And I meant the colors, you know, not just the, some of the new contemporary colors you see in the outfits the kids are wearing today, you know, it's a blend of different, different colors you're coming up with, and new colors that they use in their clothes. So I just call it fashionably contemporary. And here, uh, and I just say this stuff, definitely works in a very contemporary home, modern setting. I could just see that as a major focal point in some of the houses. All right, so I think that maybe, let me give it back to Cassie. As we 
Now, probably move, she mentioned that God's a strip, but just stay on this wall right here. Uh, and move over to Mayor. Mayor, which is called um, this is a marriage. Mayor. Can you see? <laughs> He's right over here behind me. Oh, I'm just going to go over. <laughs> Let's see what I say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For mankind, right? Sure. Curly can go on to campus. All right. Uh, to almost anybody, you probably agree, a work that evokes some very strong feelings from almost anybody who looks at it, which I assume is the objective of the artist. Mm -hmm. And um, visually and physically, very sensual work, piece of work. Um, subdued colors help portray a very serious and somber feeling. The uh, message is very contemporary and it speaks to us about the global challenges of the world we live in. So that was my comment to me, but just listening to Steve talk as well, but uh, recognize uh, the, uh, this is a, a wall that is famous. I don't know if this is called the Wailing Wall or not. Western Wall. Western Wall. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's immediately recognized by almost anybody who looks at it and what it, it is saying to us, you know, and how you interpret it. Um, definitely strong. The work, as you can see here, run from very serious to some of the more whimsical, like the waiting room. So we covered not only four different types of media already. I went from whimsical to very serious work. Uh, so we got a lot of different representations of the 400 pieces that came to us. So this is probably the most serious of all of them here. And then uh, it deserves a recognition that it got. Some beautiful technique of the, of the stone work. It just was arresting when I first saw it. Yeah. This is why I met it by a sensuous piece, both physically and visually sensuous. Touch it. You know, like the big broad strokes from this. And Mayor, how much of the work is collage versus painted? Maybe 10 15%. Collage. The figures are collaged, part of the wall. Uh, I'm not sure about the you know, ground, but I collage and then I mix it. I try to blend it so that it all looks. If there's a difference, I want to show the difference, but I want to make sure they're all the same, like all the same wall. Thought about the people there. There's two people in the back, or a seat of one, both are Orthodox Jews. The gentleman on the left is an IDF soldier. And frequently, they don't see eye to eye, but <coughs> they certainly work together here mm -hmm. because of what happened to them. So. All right, I think that may do it for this side. Any other comments oh, for yeah, yeah, so the uh, the, the figures here. Yeah. Um, you said they were collaged. They are. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they collaged in the same photograph originally? Or no, different photograph? no, different photographs. So your perspective and scale is really spot on. Did you start with the people or with the wall? I started with um, I started with the wall. I had lots of walls to pick from. Yeah. And lots of people to pick from. Right from different photographs. Mm -hmm. So I put them together. And I wanted to show, I wanted to show the ultra orthodox and the young modern Israel. And then the Jewish perspective, I should say. Oh, like, you know, vantage point and, and all oh, that. Kind of yeah, stuff. Like, very, very good. Yes. And, yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah. 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 Move down to this end of the trip here to ladies in waiting. <laughs> Thank 
So if you can just feel the boats, do you call them boats, ships, vessels? Yeah, just boats. Just in the military, just get corrected all the time. No, those are ships, not boats. You know, yeah. Yeah. Those are fishing boats. Fishing boats, yes. Well, you can just feel they're waiting for the next voyage. Just sitting there waiting. Uh, background, my comments, background, blue, blue skies, green trees, as well as their water reflection, refract. Hmm. As to a feeling of lying in wait, uh, just kind of waiting, waiting uh, while asking the question, when will they come? So I'm just I'm sitting waiting. Uh, physical condition looks like they've been around for a little bit um, and are used to waiting and waiting and hoping that someone comes soon. I noticed you did. Uh, Specifically called out the fact you use arch paper, mm -hmm. which forced me to go research with this uh, company out of France, mm -hmm. a, a paper mill that makes special paper for watercolor, for professional watercolor artists. And I just looked at their processes, how they make that, which was fabulous. So, mm -hmm. uh, ladies in waiting on the arch paper by artist Betty Crowder. And uh, thank you, Betty. That was the type of thing that I would be making these comments. But what do you say? At least they have come up with companionship. Yeah. So, I'm expecting you probably will sell that here. Probably underpriced. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, ladies and waiting, Betty, thank you for that. I think the distribution of the main subject, which is to me, the boats, mm -hmm. and the water is quite interesting. Yeah. There's, the, there's all that peacefulness, even though it, it adds the reflection. So I think that makes this piece stronger than if you know the composition had cut the water off a little higher. It's very nice. And how exactly did you do the like beneath boats? They're not really shadows because they're brighter, but they're sort of a reflection of the the boats. Doesn't you achieve them? How did I achieve with a lot of prayer? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a lot of prayer. That's, that's the water doing well because once you touch it with the watercolor, it's there and you can't move it like you can with acrylic or water or oil. I mean, so you have to really hope that once your brush touches the paper, that that's going to be it right there. Um, I did add after I had painted that. And looked at it a little bit more. I added the one piling just to the right of the boat on the left, just so I could get a little, a little bit of white in there where it was a little dark. You know, because they always say in watercolor, I guess it's true in a lot of paintings, that uh, your light is white and your dark is dark, it's like your eyes going to go. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, okay, I need a little bit of white right there, right between the boats. But mm -hmm. actually, that's it started out plein air, and um, I started that. <clears throat> that's an Apalachicola in the Panhandle, and um, and there were more boats down to the left, but they were sitting there just like that in the morning, just waiting for somebody to come by. <laughs> Let's go out, but it was a very blustery day with a lot, a lot of wind. So I don't know if they went out or not. There's the second one of people waiting. Waiting room yeah. and then we yeah. waiting. Yeah. ladies and waiting. Yeah. Don't come with it. Wait. Uh, well, maybe those two are waiting. Yeah, two. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So another theme. So we, another another medium now. Watercolor, fifth different medium. So we not deliberately, but we knew that uh, great artists in many medium and good not to ignore and great artists just because of the medium they. And say, well, is that a great work of art as a photographer, as a sculptor, as a watercolorist in oil? So 
there are great artists in all of these movies. Just hopefully you can recognize all of this. So, Betty, thank you. Thank you. We'll be moving down. What else do we have here now? We continue down the road. We have Janice, who is also here. Janice here. Thank you. All right. We'll make sure I'm just holding, holding you the last hand. So. Is Janet the last of that? All right, Janet Newman, oil on canvas as we move down to Love is Love. Uh, just fabulous work of art. Yeah. Um, uh, is my comment. I hope this isn't an insult. I said I felt that the artist was challenging, channeling 19th century impressionist American mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Mary <laughs> <laughs> hung out with Renoir, Degas, or her work sells for millions. Like yours, though, one day. <laughs> <laughs> In my <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you look at, you know, just outstanding balance, you know. Uh, the paint, the brush strokes, all of those are classic. Beautiful done. Uh, the light is beautiful. Mm -hmm. You captured the light. The uh, work is just focused on the two young individuals who are in their own world and nothing else is going on. It's, it's just them. Um, you, know, you can't make it out. So that's not important in their life. It's just them. The comment here, straightforward, gentle painting, makes a powerful statement. What the artist feels about our personal and global relationships with each other, or maybe what she feels they should be in terms of how we deal with each other. Um, this is, it, you know, it's simple, straightforward, it says love is love. At the opening, there was a comment made about this painting, which was interesting. Uh, and it just, it just kind of saddened me about the, what we feel today, somebody said, oh, they're getting political. Oh. You know, I, I kept my mouth shut. Yeah, but... I was, you know, and we all know what they meant, you know. <laughs> but look at that. Did you know these two people? No. Did you take a picture of them? Yes. Huh. I was a photographer. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was an art teacher for 40 years, and photography was my main medium. Um, so I do love to compose photos. This mm -hmm. was taken, this photo was taken during the pandemic. So lingering. <laughs> um, and it, there was a closeness. And at first I titled it Intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had a lot of questions um, from others about, is that a girl or a boy? And I, I was interested to hear you say individuals. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for that. And my answer was always, what does it matter? Um, I, I painted it the way I saw it. Um, the, the pink dreads were what I, why I painted it. You know, I saw those dreadlocks from the back and I thought, oh, those would be challenging. <laughs> you don't actually use brushes. That's a palette knife. <laughs> and, the whole thing? And the fingers. Yeah, I was going to um, say the fingers. Yeah, there's a little teeny bit of brush maybe in the zipper on the backpack, that kind of thing. But um, I really do hate doing dishes and I hate cleaning brushes. Palette knife is real easy. So, yeah, this was 411 submissions uh, of all types and shapes and forms, all medium. Photography, sculpture, beautiful works. You know, they could, we just wish you could give a lot more awards, but Christina said no. <laughs> uh, it, it was one over there, kind of an old school romantic 
uh, uh, pre pre impressions with the Skull. skill yeah. life, yeah. skill mm -hmm. life. You know that that uh, you know it, me what spoke. It was the skull that knocked it out for me. Uh -huh. Who, are you here? I don't want to say that. You know, probably would have made the kind of if it were fruit. The old fashioned fruit. <laughs> skill life. That one. Couple uh, abstracts in there. The artist is he here? The artist signed his name in the middle of it. I said, no. Oh, no. Uh, you know, what did Craig Burke, you know, what did you see? What the little thing that was saying, I wouldn't buy it from the house. What was so that was the final bottom. Would I buy it? And they're just the small things. You know, beautiful work, uh, many of them, you know. There were about a bunch of them I would buy, no question. All I needed was that Seattle money. <laughs> 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 they, uh, but uh, this is number one in my mind. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. And, uh, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. My good friends looking from Zoom. Appreciate you being here as well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you for your feedback. All right. Yes, thank you very much. Welcome to, uh, thank you, our center in Sarasota. Thank you. And uh, I thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Until the Thank next you time. Thank for coming. Mm -hmm. And um, nice. the nice show for the great harvest fields are now.